but let's say I have a bond issue out, is that we have a number of ways that we can come up with a, with, with a bond valuation, right, with, the, with that R. So we have, let's say we have, a, we have coupon bonds out there, and, you know, we, we see that we have, uh, you know, a market price. Uh, we see we have a market price, and then we also see that we have, you know, a face value. Let's say we have a face value on these bonds of $1,000, right? And we know they have a, currently have a market price of $934, um, and they are making payments, right, of, let's say, $50, $50 a year, a yearly payment of $50. And let's say that we have, uh, you know, five, year, five years remaining on this bond, okay? So what we can do, right, is that we can just substitute this in and figure out what the market rate on those bonds are, right? And so... And with the methods that we've already seen, is that basically this is going to come up with an interest rate, I over Y, or R, uh, is going to be basically 6.59%. Okay, so this is going to tell us, hey, we're looking at this, we see a market price of these bonds of 934. Given all this other stuff, this is what the market actually is estimating the riskiness of, of these bonds. All right? So we come up with this value of 6.59%. Right? So that we can use that component into our cost of debt. Okay? Now, this doesn't tell us what our, our whole cost of debt is going to be, okay? Because what we have is that we have a tax write-off, okay? We have a tax write-off, okay? And that tax write-off comes from um, a benefit that, we, that the government gives us, okay? And so what our actual cost, we're going to denote as R sub dt, is basically going to be equal to the rate on the debt multiplied by 1 minus our tax rate. Okay. So essentially, if, we have a, if we're in a 30% tax bracket, we pay 30% on our income. And we had that rate there, is that we would be able to compute what our actual cost of debt is. Right? We had that 6.59% multiplied by 1 minus 0.3, meaning that income level, right? And that's going to tell us that we have an actual cost of this debt here of 4.61%. So that means that our actual cost of borrowing is 4.61%. Now, the difference here between this is between debt, preferred stock, and common stock is that you don't get the tax write-off on common stock and preferred stock. Okay? So this is very beneficial for the company. Now, just to, to clarify, though, is that this is the... But the benefit to the investor is that the investor still is getting 6.59%. The investor is getting this, but the tax write-off is accounting for that difference. 